The private lender is the bank. In fact, the private lender doesn't own any part of the property. It's your entity, your LLC, your land trust, whatever you're buying your properties in. Now, I'm talking about here in the as relates to single family houses. Now, if you're doing a large project such as multifamily or apartments, then it's common for the private lenders that are like investing in a fund to get a piece of the profit. But in single family houses, we call it one offs. The private lenders are loaning money secured by that single family house and they're getting a, a interest rate just like the bank would. So I if you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Well, hello there, Jay Connor here, the Private Money Authority. And just last week, as I was doing a live stream here on YouTube, I um, had a question that was uh, put in the comment section uh, on the uh, live stream from Wes. And so, Wes, thank you for your question. And by the way, for you that is watching this uh, video, whenever you have a real estate investing question, uh, particularly as it relates to private money, uh, be sure and put your uh, questions uh, in the comment section below and I'll get your question ans uh, answered for you. So Wes has uh, actually had two parts to his question. Wes asked in the um, uh, last week on the live stream, he said, in essence, Wes wanted to know how much equity does a private lender get either during the deal or after the deal. And the other part of the question was, how do you run the math? based on the number of investors that you have in a deal. So Wes, let me answer these two questions. First of all, how much equity does the private lender or the investor in the deal get? And the answer is zero. Now there are private money deals that you can structure to where the private lender will get what they what we call the back, you know, a back end percentage of the profit. But in my world, private lenders not getting any equity. You know, the old business model of using private money and private lenders is the private lender would put up the money. We, the real estate entrepreneur um, and investor, would go find the deal, negotiate the deal, oversee the deal. And then at the end of the deal, private lender gets a percentage of the profit or they split the profits. But not in this world. In this world, the private lender is the bank, right? In fact, the private lender doesn't own any part of the property. It's your entity, your LLC or land trust, whatever you're buying your properties in. Now, I'm talking about here in the as relates to single family houses. Now, if you're doing a large project such as multifamily or apartments, then it's common for the private lenders that are like investing in a fund to get a piece of the profit. But in single family houses, we call it one offs. And what we mean by one offs is that every deal stands on its own. The private lenders are not uh, investing in a fund. The private lenders are loaning money secured by that single family house and they're getting a, 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 a straight uh, interest rate, just like the bank would. So I pay a straight 8%. 8% of the uh, loan amount that the private lender has loaned on that deal. Now that leads me, Wes, to your next question that you posed, and that is, how do you run the math based on the number of investors? Well, here's how we run the math. First of all, in answer to the question, running the math, what we, uh, what we do in the program and how we work with our private lenders is we only borrow a maximum of 75% of the after repaired value. Now I didn't say borrow 75% of the purchase price. Big difference between borrowing the percentage of the purchase price and borrowing a percentage of the after repaired value. So for example, let's say just for easy figuring, we have a house that's got an after repaired value of $200,000. That's the after repaired value. 
Now, let's say that it's got a rehab. It's got renovation that's that's needed. Say you have thirty five thousand dollars. And then I say that you're going to buy this house all cash with private money uh, for one hundred thousand dollars. And by the way, that's a very, very common example. I buy houses all the time that need renovation and rehab. I buy them all the time at 50 percent or less than 50 cents of the after repaired value. So let's run the math, Wes. After repaired value, 200,000. Rehab's 35. I'm going to buy it for 100. So if I can borrow up to 75% of the after repaired value, well, the after repaired value is 200,000. So I'm going to borrow 75% of that, which is $150,000. So watch the math here, Wes, and how we're running it. So I borrow up to 75%. That's 150,000. Well, I'm buying it. Remember in the example, I'm buying it for $100,000. So when I buy this house, $150,000 is wired into my real estate attorney's trust account. You might be using a title company to close your deals. Whoever the closing agent is, private lender is going to wire the funds to the closing agent's trust account. Well, in this example, I'm borrowing $50,000 more than I need to buy it. Did you follow that? I'm borrowing 150 at 75% of the after repaired value. I'm buying it for 100. So that's got what's called excess cash. And by the way, that's the actual phrase that is on my real estate attorney's check stub that I pick up. So I'm picking up a check, $50,000 less some closing costs when I buy the house. You see, in this part of private money, we're not taking any down payment out of our own pocket to the closing table. All the funding is being taken care of by the private lender. So I'm picking up a check. I mean, who wants to get paid to buy houses, right? So I'm picking up a check for $50,000 less than closing costs. Now I've got that check. Now I'm going to use $35,000 of that check to rehab or renovate the house in this example. That leaves me an extra $15,000 from the excess cash when I bought the house that I can use for carrying costs, utility bills, um, and if the private lender is actually needing monthly payments, whose money am I using to make the monthly payments when I initially start that deal? I'm using the private lender's money, which was in the excess cash, to make their initial monthly payments. So private money, just in and of itself, can and will like put a big infusion of money in your checkbook. It's the fastest way I know to like increase your checkbook when you're doing real estate investing, particularly single family houses. Now you also, in your question, Wes, you talked about based on the number of investors. So that brings up a good question, Wes. Can we use more than one private lender to fund a particular deal? And the answer is yes. Now let's use the same example. After repaired values, $200,000. The maximum I'm going to borrow is 75% of the after repaired value. So I'm going to borrow 150,000. Well, I can get the $150,000 from one private lender or, for example, I could use two different private lenders. I could be getting $100,000 from one private lender and I could be getting $50,000 from another private lender. So how does that work? Well, the private lender that is loaning the larger piece of money goes in what we call first position, first position. And then the private lender that is loaning a smaller amount of money, in this case, $50,000, they go in second position or what's called a junior lien position. And for those that are in a secondary position, I'll pay them a little bit more interest. I'll pay 10% to the private lender that has the smaller amount of money. I don't mind paying 10% on smaller amounts of money, but I don't want to pay 10% on larger amounts of money. So you see, now we run the numbers based on something that we call total loan to value. And what total loan to value means is we're going to add up all the loans from the private lenders and then divide that by the after repaired value. So total loan to value in this example, we got $100,000 from one private lender in first position. We got a $50,000 loan from a private lender in second position. So add those together. There's your 150. So 150 divided by 200,000, we have a total loan to value still at 75%, even though we're using two different private lenders. 
Wes, thank you so much for uh, submitting the question. Again, if you're watching uh, or listening to this video and you've got any kind of private money questions, put those in the comment bar below and I'll get your questions answered just as soon as possible. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Conner.